It is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020, and you are tuned into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Uh, I've been trying to wear like different hats and stuff every single day because I feel like that's kind of like the only thing you see on me um, in these videos. Um, and so I'm wearing my uh, Darren Pittman uh, Sprint Car American Flag hat today, but I realize I have like literally no late model apparel. Um, so I probably should rectify that. Um, and really the only thing outside of Sprint Car apparel that I have is like the Super Dirt Week hat and Super Dirt Week uh, pullover that I have. Uh, so I probably should uh, do a better job with that and, and uh, try to represent more people across the spectrum. If you have people uh, you would like to see me uh, rep on the show, let me know and I will uh, certainly look into doing that. Uh, the season opener for the iRacing World of Outlaws Sprint Cars World Championship was last night. Hope you got a chance to check it out. The series took on Volusia Speedway Park. In the feature, it was all defending champion Alex Bergeron. He won by eight and a half seconds. Uh, Bergeron started off the night by going quick time in qualifying after struggling the week before in the preseason test race. He won the first heat race over the e-NASCAR champion Zach Novak, making his series debut. Uh, there's quite a few different guys in this series that are crossing over from other series. Um, some guys from the late model series, some guys from the uh, e-NASCAR world have mo uh, made the move over to the sprint car championship. Uh, so uh, some interesting kind of talent mixes here. Cameron Merriman won Heat 2, Blake Cannon won Heat 3, and Austin Semmelman won Heat 4. Alex Smolders and Tyler Ducharme won the two B mains. Uh, like I said yesterday, the, the format is pretty standard. Qualifying, line up straight up by heats, top four to the feature, and then they run two, ba two B mains, and the top two from the Bs also tag on to the back of the feature. Uh, there were no cautions in the 35-lap feature that went green to checkered in about nine and a half minutes. Um, at the end, it was Bergeron over Blake Cannon, Cameron Merriman, Adam LB, and David Heilman. Alex Smolders was two spots outside of a transfer in his heat race. He came from the B to finish sixth in the feature. Um, I didn't see uh, the, the stats are, are uh, um, a, a little strange and, and not strange, but like uh, the, the kind of flash things up on the screen during the broadcast fairly quickly and then trying to kind of track things down at the end of the night. I was actually taking screenshots uh, to make sure I had a list of everything. But uh, I would imagine if anybody was was hard charger, it was probably Alex Smolders from the move he made. Next Monday night, the series heads to Lernerville Speedway for the second race of the season. Uh, you can watch the action starting at 9 p.m. Eastern on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, I believe this is the first time they're going to Lernerville um, on the schedule, and it looks like they're going to go there twice this season. Uh, so busy racing schedule for them. Like I mentioned uh, on the show yesterday, they're going to run through Memorial Day uh, each week on Monday nights. I've really enjoyed kind of digging into these races the last couple of days, watching live last night, and then digging into some of the older races, which are all available for free on their YouTube channel. The racing is like super frantic, um, and it's it's really close. The programs move along really quickly. Um, it, it's kind of like as soon as a race is is over, uh, you know, a heat race or things like that, the next race is right on track. Uh, the entire broadcasts are usually right around an hour, maybe an hour and fifteen minutes. Um, I think the program last night was done in, in a little bit, little little like a little bit less than an hour, and then they kind of do some interviews and stuff with some of the top running guys. Um, you, you know, over the course of the end of the broadcast, but that includes heat racing, everything. So um, pretty, pretty nice to be able to jump in and, and watch a full night's program in, in that short amount of time. And like I said, the way the, the kind of system works and things like that, as soon as one track, one race is off track, the, the next one is lined right up and they're, and they're rolling again. So um, in, in doing some research, I've messaged a ton with Billy Rowley, who's one of the guys competing this season. He, it's his first time uh, competing in the Pro Series. And a point that he's made um, is that at a normal sprint car show, you've got kind of a wide range of budgets and equipment levels and things like that. Um, you know, you've got, you know, different engines and, and you know, different chassis and, and, you know, some teams have more money, some teams have less money. Um, but with this, you know, you don't have that. Like even at a World of Outlaws show, the, the very top, you're going to have a wide range. But with this deal, everyone has the same platform. Like nobody has more horsepower. Nobody has a different car. Um, it, it's very equalizing that, you know, everybody basically has the same thing. You know, they can make changes to their setups. Um, and obviously, you know, their their home setup, which, you know, includes their steering wheel and things like that, um, are going to be different across uh, across the board. But um, those things are, are very minor differences. And I, and I would imagine if you ended up looking at their setups, like their actual car setups across the board, um, they're all probably fairly similar between, you know, what they are able to do to the chassis and what they're able to do to the wings and the tires and things like that. It's probably not a huge difference across the board. So because of that, like it's really comes down to just luck and then, you know, driver skill, you know, what they're doing out there and, and you know, their experience and things like that. 
I think that's why the racing is so close and so competitive, um, because of it, you know it's it's such an equal spot that everybody is starting from, um, and and I think because of that, that's what makes it interesting that Alex Bergeron has been able to do what he's been able to do for the last season or so, uh, plus is you know the five wins last season already starting out this year with a very dominating win. Um, it, it, it's insane to see, you know, the, the domination he's been able to, to put on the other drivers, knowing just how close all of this is and, and how difficult it is to compete. Um, but, uh, really fun to watch. I would definitely recommend checking it out. I'm going to continue covering this, uh, all season. Um, and uh, you know, with, uh, the, the kind of lack of actual racing going on, you know, in the real world, um, I, I think you'll probably see the Outlaw Social channels kind of push the series a little bit more also, uh, just because it's it's really fun to watch. It's it's super frantic. Um, and, and like I said, you know, I think if you've watched some of the NASCAR stuff here the last couple of weeks with some of the, the cup drivers and stuff like that competing, um, it seems like maybe the first half of those races are, are kind of wreck fests um, until the field kind of thins out a little bit and guys kind of figure it out. But, um, and then from there, it kind of settles in and you get some decent racing down towards the end. You don't really have that here. There, there were some... Uh, a couple of crashes and things like that in some of the heats with with you know obviously a short amount of time guys are got to make moves and try to get to the front but um you know these guys are super talented and, and super skilled and, and you just you don't see those big wreck fests those big pileups i mean i'm sure at certain points during the season you'll see that but last night we certainly did not see that on a very fast volusia speedway park so uh like i said we're going to continue to cover this we'll be back next week with more coverage of this series um, and at some point, we'd like to maybe talk to some of the drivers on the show, um, maybe some of the series announcers, maybe some of the people around the show to give you guys an idea about some of these personalities. But uh, like I said, hope you got a chance to tune in. And if you didn't, you can go back and rewatch these shows. They're all available on the iRacing YouTube channels. A quick update on some more racing postponements. I, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about this stuff as much, but I uh, just wanted to mention a couple here because they're kind of big. The Outlaws have pushed back the Sprint Car Series again. Um, they'd already pushed back uh, the schedule you know, into some of that California swing, um, and now events through April 17th and 18th at the Stockton Dirt Track have been postponed. They've also postponed the Illini 100 weekend at Farmer City Raceway for the late model series. They are hoping to reschedule as many of these races as possible. Um, they're going to be kind of looking at open windows and open dates throughout the season to try to fit these back in. Other schedules that have been halted include USCS Sprint Cars, the Comp Camps Super Dirt Late Model Series, and the Crate Racing USA season. Um, everybody's obviously in a holding pattern right now trying to figure out how kind of this is going to go. And, and it's nice that you're hearing a lot of postponed and, and not canceled. Um, and so, you know, hopefully once we get the racing season going on, there's going to be a ton of racing to watch and a ton of racing to talk about. Um, and w once we get rolling again, uh, speaking of racing to watch, uh, the, you know, we've been talking about some of the streaming options and things like that across the, the panel or across the board. Um, but starting actually, uh, just here, not too long ago at, at eight o'clock, as I record this, it's about nine 45, uh, flow racing has launched a 24 seven USAC channel on flowracing.com. Any time of the day. Now you can tune into flowracing.com and catch USAC racing, um, from the USAC archives, including past national events from all series sprint weeks and more um, and this also includes their thunder relived series which is still going to broadcast on thursday and saturday nights uh, i just had it pulled up here a little bit ago and they were showing a, uh, a usac midget race so um, any time of day 24 7 if you're looking for something to watch flow racing has got you covered right now 24 7 usac action uh, so pretty cool that uh, some of the additional offerings that are coming out from some of the services. Um, and I mentioned this yesterday on the show, but don't forget tomorrow is the World of Outlaws iRacing Invitational on Dirt Vision at 9 p.m. Sounds like they have a really, really nice field of drivers uh, setting up to participate in that. Um, you know, obviously sprint car drivers and, and they've kind of broadened it out and I think they're going to add in some of the late model series guys, maybe some of the big block guys as well um, to, to that show. So it'll be super interesting to watch kind of this convergence of worlds uh, happen for the dirt, dirt world on, on iRacing. Uh, so we will be paying attention to that. Uh, that will be uh, live tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern uh, on Dirt Vision uh, for all you Fast Pass people out there. Um, thanks for tuning into the show today. You can find Dirt Tracker daily on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or where you get podcasts. Please subscribe. Leave me a review uh, if you would like to. You can also watch the show on YouTube and Facebook. been posting it there every single day. Uh, you can email the show at info at dirttracker.com. You can follow along with Dirt Tracker at facebook.com slash dirttracker, twitter.com slash dirttracker, and dirttracker.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Justin underscore Fiedler. Uh, if you saw last night, I actually live tweeted some of the, uh, the iRacing event on the Dirt Tracker Twitter account. Um, and I'll probably do that again next week just to kind of uh, give some more coverage and give another avenue for people to kind of keep up with things there. 
And I went through and tried to follow a bunch of those guys on Twitter as well, a bunch of those drivers. Um, so if you're looking for some of those guys to follow, you can go peruse through the Dirt Tracker follows and, and find some of those guys that competed last night. Um, if you'd like to also, you can sign up for the Dirt Tracker weekly newsletter on the website. I will be much better about sending that out uh, <laughs> than I have the last couple of weeks. I did get one out on Sunday night um, and I will be better about that going forward. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Hope you have a, a good rest of your Tuesday and we will see you tomorrow on Dirt Tracker Daily.